Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 33 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course, where we go over the T0A questions and AC power circuits. The T0A section of questions deals with hazardous voltages, fuses and circuit breakers, grounding, lighting protection, battery safety, and electrical code compliance. So this whole T0 sub-element deals with safety, which is very important in amateur radio because unlike other hobbies, amateur radio can actually kill you. So pay close attention, and if you need to go through these lessons a couple times, I would recommend it. Which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12-volt storage battery? The answer, the best answer, is shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. And kind of like I said, this is a best answer question on the exam. One of the other possible answers talks about if you touch both terminals, you can get an electrical shock. And that falls under the category of no duh. But in general, there's a theme when they talk about batteries and safety. The, there seems to be an ant, a common theme among some of the answers that they have to do with explosions. So when in doubt, go with the explosion answer. So which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12-volt storage battery? Shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. How does current flowing through the body cause a health hazard? Well, on the exam, there's three correct answer for this. So this is one of those all of the above type questions. The answers they're looking for is by heating tissue, it disrupts the electrical functions of cells, and it causes involuntary muscle contractions. So that's what electrocution is. So it's an all of the above question. Heating tissue disrupts electrical function of cells, and it causes involuntary muscle contractions. What is connected to the green wire in a three-wire electrical AC plug? Well, the green wire in a three-wire three electrical AC plug is the safety ground. So green, GR, and ground, GR. What is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? Well, the answer is to interrupt power in case of overload. And this, is, this one's a little bit tricky to pick out from the other possible answers. There's some are similar to this. But fuses prevent overloads. So that is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit. Why is it unwise to install a 20 ampere fuse in the place of a 5 ampere fuse? Well, the reason it's unwise is excessive current could cause a fire. Now, there could be a good reason your equipment has a 5 amp fuse, and probably it's to prevent overload and preventing a fire. Now, your equipment, if you put a 20 amp fuse in there, will turn on and it will run. However, if there's a surge or your, your, the current increases, it could overheat the circuits and start a fire. So if it gets hot enough, it could start a fire, 5 amp fuse would blow before that happens. What is a good way to guard against electrical shock at your station? Well, in general, the answer is to ground it, and ground it well. Now, there, of all the possible answers on the exam, they all have something to do with getting good ground, and they're all correct. So this is another all of the above questions, so just remember to, get, to prevent electrical shock at your station, you need a good ground. Which of these precautions should be taken when installing devices for lightning protection in a coaxial cable feed line? Well, the answer is you want to ground all of the protectors to a common plate which is in turn connected to an external ground and this can be a tricky answer to sort out from the, the rest of the possible ones. Now the first two, unless you're very wise in the ways of communication, these first two possible answers don't make any sense at all. The third possible answer suggests not using a common ground plate. Now you want all your grounds connected to a common plate which goes to an external ground. And if you remember, you want to keep lightning away from you, as far away from you as possible, and you want to send it to an external ground far away, that might help answer the question. What safety equipment should always be included in home-built equipment that is powered from 120-volt AC power circuits? The answer is a fuse or circuit breaker in series with the AC hot conductor. Now, this question is asking about safety equipment, and of the possible answers, one of them has to do with fuses. Fuses are a type of safety equipment which protects both your radio equipment and prevents fires. Now, most modern commercial equipment will have fuses or breakers built in, but homebrew equipment that you make may or may not. So you need to make sure that you add a fuse or circuit breaker into homebrew equipment that's in series with the AC hot conductor to prevent fires and to also prevent your equipment from burning up. So what safety equipment should always be included in home build equipment that is powered from 120 volt AC power circuits? A fuse or circuit breaker in series with the AC hot conductor. What kind of hazard is presented by a conventional 12 volt storage battery? Now the hazard is explosive gas can collect if not properly vented. So, and this is another one that's a bit tricky. 
Um, it won't emit ozone, which knocks out two of the possible answers. Um, these batteries are often used in solar power stations, and if you have a bank of batteries and you're leaning over to make adjustments, there is a risk of shock if you make connection with the batteries. However, you need to go with the best answer, and if you're using one battery in an unventilated area, there is a risk of explosive gas building up, which could cause a fire or explosion. What can happen if a lead acid storage battery is charged or discharged too quickly? Same thing as the last question. The battery could overheat and give off flammable gas or explode. So you don't want to go boom. I memorize this one for just general purposes. If the battery gets charged or discharged too quickly, it can overheat and give off flammable gas. What kind of hazard might exist in a power supply when it is turned off and disconnected? Well, you might receive an electric shock from the charge stored in large capacitors. Now, this is something you don't want to learn the hard way. You want, when you turn off a power supply or you unplug a power supply, you want to wait a couple seconds before you start fiddling with it. Now, capacitors, like we talked about in previous lessons, store energy in an electric field, and power supplies sometimes will have very big capacitors. So when you turn the power supply off, the, power, the capacitors will still store their energy for a short period of time. Now depending on the size of the power supply and the size of the capacitor, it might take a few seconds or more for the capacitors to kind of discharge their energy. So what kind of hazard might exist in a power supply when it's turned off and disconnected? You might receive an electric shock from the charge stored in the large capacitors. And that's it for the review, and now it is time for the T0A quiz. So number your paper from 1 to 11, pause the video if you need more time, and when you're done, stop by hamwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page and the T0A link to go and check your answers. Now let's start with the quiz. Question 1. Which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12-volt storage battery? A. Touching both terminals with the hands can cause electric shock. B. Shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. C. RF emissions from the battery. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 2. How does current flowing through the body cause a health hazard? A. By heating tissue. B. It disrupts the electrical functions of cells. C. It causes involuntary muscle contractions. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 3. What is connected to the green wire in a three-wire electrical AC plug? A. Neutral, B. Hot, C. Safety ground, or D. The white wire. Question 4. What is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? A. To prevent power supply ripple from damaging a circuit. B. To interrupt power in case of overload. C. To limit current to prevent shocks. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 5. Why is it unwise to install a 20 ampere fuse in the place of a 5 ampere fuse? A. The larger fuse would be likely to blow because it is rated for higher current. B. The power supply ripple would greatly increase. C. Excessive current could cause a fire. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 6. What is a good way to guard against electrical shock at your station? A. Use three wire cords and plugs for all AC powered equipment. B. Connect all AC powered station equipment to a common safety ground. C. Use a circuit protected by a ground fault interrupter or D, all of these choices are correct. Question 7. Which of these precautions should be taken when installing devices for lightning protection in a coaxial cable feed line? A, include a parallel bypass switch for each protector so that it can be switched out of the circuit when running high power. B, include a series switch in the ground line of each protector to prevent RF overload from inadvertently damaging the protector. C, keep the ground wires from each protector separate and connect to a stationed ground or D, ground all of the protectors to a common ground plate, which is in turn connected to an external ground. Question 8. What safety equipment should always be included in home-built equipment that is powered from 120-volt AC power circuits? A, a fuse or circuit breaker in series with the AC hot conductor. B, an AC voltmeter across the incoming power source. C, an inductor in series with the AC power source. Or D, a capacitor across the AC power source. Question 9. What kind of hazard is presented by a conventional 12-volt storage battery? A. It emits ozone, which can be harmful to the atmosphere. B. Shock hazard due to high voltage. C. Explosive gas can collect if not properly ventilated. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 10. What can happen if a lead-acid storage battery is charged or discharged too quickly? 
A, the batter can overheat and give off flammable gas or explode. B, the voltage can become reversed. C, the memory effect will reduce the capacity of the battery. Or D, all of these choices are correct. And question 11. What kind of hazard might exist in a power supply when it is turned off and disconnected? A. Static electricity could damage the grounding system. B. Circulating currents inside the transformer might cause damage. C. The fuse might blow if you remove the cover. Or D. You might receive an electric shock from the charge stored in large capacitors. And that's it for the T0A quiz and lesson 33. Now that you're done with the quiz, stop by hamwhisper.com and check your answers. And until next time in Lesson 34, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.